On January 10, 1984, 50-year-old Patricia Smith's body was found in the Lakewood condo she shared with her daughter and grandchildren just west of Denver, Colorado. She had been assaulted and then fatally beaten with a hammer. Male DNA was collected from her body, nearby carpeting, and on a blanket that was used to cover her body. Patricia used to be a flight attendant. She was described as an outgoing, friendly, sophisticated woman who had recently started her own interior decorating business. At the time of Patricia's discovery, the Denver metropolitan area was plagued by a 12-day crime spree. Multiple victims in the area suffered the same fate as Patricia. In 2010, as DNA technology was getting more advanced, investigators were able to confirm that it was the same man responsible for the multiple hammer attacks in Denver back in 1984. One of the other hammer attacks that was committed by the man responsible for what happened to Patricia is the attacker on the Bennett family. This is a photo of the family. The unknown man was responsible for taking three of their lives just six days after he ended Patricia's life. Bruce Bennett had married his wife Deborah before joining the Navy, where he served at Pearl Harbor between 1976 and 1980 as a sonar analyst. Upon the completion of his service commitment, Bruce and Deborah moved to Aurora, Colorado. There, Bruce worked at a family-owned furniture store and helped Deborah raise the two daughters. They led a quiet life. They worked hard and stayed home at night. Bruce enrolled in a local college, where he trained to be an air traffic controller with an eye toward landing a job at an airport in the area. These dreams came to a shattering end on January 15, 1984, between midnight and 6 a.m. when an intruder entered the Bennett home. Investigators believe Bruce confronted the attacker on the stairs. Deep gashes were later found on his arms and body, and blood was found up and down the staircase. The following morning, Deborah's body was discovered in her bedroom, while seven-year-old Melissa was found in her bed. The young daughter, Vanessa, then age three, was in bed when her grandmother came to the house and discovered the carnage. She survived the attack, despite suffering a shattered jaw and pelvis, among other horrific injuries. More than 500 people were questioned during this initial phase of the investigation, and while no arrests were made, detectives never stopped looking for the person responsible. Six years after DNA technology linked Patricia's case with the Bennett family in 2016, Investigators used age-processed DNA phenotyping, a technique developed by Parabon Nanolabs and dubbed Snapshot, to try and move the investigation forward. The result was a pair of images, one, a likeness of a possible suspect at the time, and a second, age to approximate his appearance in 2016. After the flurry of activity spurred by the Snapshot pictures quieted down, the Bennetts and Patricia slid from the headlines again. Finally, in August 2018, investigators announced that they caught the man responsible for all the hammer attacks when his DNA scored a hit on the combined DNA index system. The man is Alex Ewing. In 2018, he was already behind bars for brutally beating a couple in Nevada with an axe handle. In August 2021, a jury in Arapahoe County District Court found Ewing guilty of taking the lives of Bruce, Deborah, and Melissa Bennett. I have seen all kinds of evil and wickedness. Nothing compares to the level of depravity that your actions show in this case, said Judge Darren Vale at Ewing's sentencing. There is no punishment that is too harsh for you. I will do everything in my power to make sure you never draw a free breath ever again, he added. He was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 20 years for each crime, to be served consecutively to his prison term in Nevada. Patricia's case proved to be more difficult. In October of 2021, a Jefferson County Court judge declared a mistrial after granting a defense request for Ewing to undergo a competency evaluation. He passed that test, leading to a launch of a second trial that concluded in April 2022 with a guilty verdict. Afterward, 1st Judicial District DA Alex King, whose office prosecuted Ewing, issued the following statement. We truly appreciate the jury's service in this difficult case, and our thoughts are with the family of Patricia Smith as they finally see justice for her horrific demise over three decades ago. Today's verdict is the result of significant efforts and dedication by law enforcement, scientists, the witnesses who testified, and our staff, without whom this outcome would not have been possible. On April 12, 2022, 
Alex Ewing was sentenced to another life sentence for what he did to Patricia Smith. Patricia's daughter, Cherry Letton, had this to say. It was not a human that took my mother's life. It was an evil monster who does not deserve to walk this earth. Ewing is not expected to be tried in several other attacks he is suspected of carrying out in the Denver area around the same time. One of those incidents was a home invasion on January 4, 1984, during which a man beat a sleeping couple with a hammer. Shortly after Alex Ewing took the lives of the Bennett family, authorities arrested him in Kingman, Arizona for breaking into a man's home and beating him with a slab of concrete. Due to overcrowding in Arizona, Ewing was held at a detention center in Utah before his trial. In August 1984, Ewing was en route back to Arizona when the deputies transporting him stopped in Henderson, Nevada for a restroom break and he escaped. That very night, Ewing broke into yet another home in Nevada and beat a couple with an axe handle, nearly ending their lives. He was arrested two days later and spent the next three decades in the Nevada prison system before DNA connected him to the other crimes in 2018. A woman's remains were found on the side of California State Route 152 in the Gilroy area, about 80 miles southeast of San Francisco, in June 1993 in an area known as Pacheco Pass. The female body was dressed in blue clothing and she could not be identified. Cold case detectives referred to the Jane Doe as Blue Pacheco. In 2006, Keith Hunter Jefferson submitted a letter to the Santa Clara County District Attorney's Office, admitting to assaulting an unknown female along a dirt turnout on Highway 152 and then ending her life. A year later, he pled guilty. Investigators have confirmed that Jefferson has taken the lives of at least eight people. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to help investigators in identifying Blue Pacheco. In 2019, investigators began utilizing genetic genealogy in an attempt to identify her. They partnered with the nonprofit DNA Doe Project. Finally, on April 13, 2022, she was identified as Patricia Skipple. She was known to family and friends as Patsy. Patricia was a mother and approximately 45 years old when her life was taken. As for Jefferson, he is serving four life sentences without the possibility of parole in Oregon. On December 18, 1996, a little after 9 a.m., workers at the Pleasant Valley Memorial Park Cemetery in Onondale, Virginia, discovered the body of a woman. She was found near the section of the cemetery where infants are buried the workers then called police. It was discovered that she put a bag over her head and secured the bag with tape. She was wearing a red shirt, a sweater, blue pants, and an Eddie Bauer jacket. An 8-inch Christmas tree and her backpack were found next to her. She was also found to be listening to a cassette tape using a tape player and headphones. Two notes were found with one saying, Now I lay me down to sleep, soon to drift to the eternal deep. And though I shall die and shall not wake, sleep sweeter will be than this life I forsake. The second message read, Deceased by own hands, prefer no autopsy. Please order cremation with funds provided. Thank you, Jane Doe. Two $50 bills were found with her. One of the bills was for the cemetery. The other bill was for the coroner. Authorities determined that she really did take her own life by suffocation but they were unable to identify her. The unknown woman was nicknamed the Christmas Tree Lady. She was reported to be a Caucasian woman, had a height of around 5 feet, and was between 50 and 70 years old. Hoping to find a match, authorities looked at many nearby cases which involved missing people, but they failed. In 2000, a colored sketch of the Christmas Tree Lady was released. Unfortunately, no one came forward who knew her, and she would remain unidentified for many more years. Then, in 2022, investigators partnered with Othram Inc., a Texas lab, to help identify the woman. In January, they conducted tests using DNA. The tests were made possible by donations. In May of 2022, Othram discovered that a man, David Meyer, could be the Christmas tree lady's brother. Investigators contacted David, and he told them that he did have a missing sister. After David looked at the drawing of the Christmas tree lady, he was not able to say whether or not she was his sister because the last time he saw her was decades ago. The detectives then went to his other sister, Clough. 
Clough said that it was definitely their sister. DNA was taken from Clough, and the Christmas tree lady was then identified as their sister, 69-year-old Joyce Marilyn Meyer Somers. This is what we know about her. She was born in Davenport, Iowa on July 20th, 1927, and had four siblings. Joyce relocated to Los Angeles to work at a magazine. After she left the magazine, she taught second grade at a local Los Angeles elementary school. In the 1960s, Joyce and her mother had an argument where she felt that her mother was treating her terribly. Joyce then moved to Seattle and married, but later divorced in 1977. She then moved to Tucson, Arizona, where her siblings visited her. This was the last time they saw her. Her siblings later hired a private investigator to locate her, but this failed. In the early 1990s, Joyce's brother traveled to Tucson in an attempt to locate her, only to find the trailer she had lived in abandoned. In it, he discovered a book, The Target Child, written by Joyce. In the book, she wrote about her supposed abusive upbringing. Major Ed O'Carroll had this to say. After decades of wondering what had happened to their loved one, Joyce's family is finally at peace. Thanks to the dedicated work of several generations of FCPD detectives, anonymous donors, and Othram. Our detectives never stopped working for Joyce and her family. Advances in technology will continue to help close cases and prove answers to victims' families. Shortly before 6 a.m. on January 21, 2003, deputies responding to reports of gunfire found two victims' bodies laying face down alongside the road in the 2001 block of Willow Glen Drive in DeHesa, California. Each had been shot repeatedly. They were identified as 30-year-old Patrick John Green and 17-year-old Christopher Brandon Vigil. Witnesses told police they heard someone talking and then heard five or six rapid gunshots and a car screeching away. It would take over 19 years for investigators to track down the person responsible. On April 13, 2022, agents with the Regional Fugitive Task Force arrested Michael Romero of National City, California. Officials have not yet disclosed what led investigators to identify Romero as the culprit. The circumstances and motivations of the case are still under investigation. Romero was booked into the San Diego Central Jail.